And may the words of Christ lift us up, the words of life, the words of hope, the words of love. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Destroyed, that henceforth 
we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Praise be unto the Lord our God for these words. Amen. If you would, please bow your heads in prayer. Great Master and Holy Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the ability to gather here in your name. And we ask of you, O Lord, that we might live in the freedom that you have given us, the freedom from sin and shame, the freedom from the evils that so easily dominate our fragile psyches. And we humbly ask for your help, O oh Lord, to live in the new life that is given to us through your Son, Jesus Christ, that we might no longer walk after the old man, but bound by your love, we might stand by and serve you and you alone. I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Satan's manifested schemes and you feel the urge within you to submit to earthly fears don't let the faith you are standing in seem to disappear praise the Lord he can work Praise the 
For our sermon this morning, I invite you to take the Bibles out. I invite you to take the Word of God out. I invite you to take the sword of the Spirit, the very Word of God, in your hands. We're going to begin by going to the, God, the book of Romans, chapter 6, starting with verse 1. Romans 6, starting with verse 1. Listen now to the words of the Apostle Paul. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Do you not know that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. For when we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. And henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Praise be the Lord God for these words. Amen. Jesus Christ, through his death and resurrection, paid the price for us so that we could be free from sin. His grace abounds the love that we don't deserve. is there so that all of our sins could be forgiven. We have the promise of eternal life that we are a new creature in Christ. But the same question always comes up. Do we live that new life or do we live in sin? And the argument came back then to the Apostle Paul, which also comes today. Well, if I want to be forgiven for what I'm doing, I shouldn't worry about what I'm doing because grace will take care of everything. I'm free to do whatever I want to do because Jesus will forgive me in the end. Well, the truth is we don't have an unlimited grace ticket. Sooner or later, God the Father looks down at us and says, I'm tired of putting straps on my son's back for you so that you can be forgiven and have the promise of eternal life. But we continue to use our freedom. Instead of being free from sin, we use it as freedom to go, well, I'm forgiven, or you love me, or in this world, our freedoms are being taken advantage of. Our freedoms are being taken away. And the very people that are taking our freedoms away are doing it in the name of freedom. Well, I'm free to be me. Free to stand up and say what I believe in, but you're not free to say what you want to say. What you say is offensive. If you speak about unconditional love, no, you speak about unconditional hate. They turn things on us. They turn things around. Well, you've had enough of your freedom. It's time for me to be free. We're taking away our freedoms. They're boarding us up from our churches. They're throwing us out. They're saying we can't get together in some places of the world. They're afraid to even praise the name of Jesus. They're telling us that we must look at all these all alternative ways of living and call them good and call what is upright, holy, and true and given in this good book the words of unconditional love and say that's wrong and hateful doing everything in this world to separate us from Jesus and we're doing the same thing when we choose the path of sin instead of the path of righteousness let's be honest with what righteousness is doing what is right doing what is true doing what God commands us to do see God commands us to love the sinner and hate the sin but as the same quandary came to the folks that were talking to the apostle Paul well, can't we just keep on sinning so grace can keep on growing and we'll all be forgiven and we'll all be okay and I can still keep sinning, but I'll be forgiven. Why are you so loving with sin? 
Separation from God is not going to take you to eternal life. Separation from God is not going to give you forgiveness. Separating yourself from God's word and God's hopes for you and God's dreams and hurting others and breaking hearts and feeding yourself instead of feeding others is not in the connecting you with God. Why do we continue to be a slave to sin? Why do we let others willingly enslave us and tell us what we can and can't do? Yes, we're blessed in Texas that we can assemble. We're blessed in Texas that we can worship. But we also understand throughout this country and throughout this world there are places that people can't even do that. You can't even gather more than six people in some time in some places. Families that have lost loved ones can't even come together and console themselves. Churches in Canada have been taken over and people have been thrown out saying, you can't congregate and you can't worship because it's too dangerous. It's too dangerous to praise God. It's too dangerous to fellowship. It's too dangerous for it to show unconditional love. See, the true test of faith is to stand up in the face of hate Stand up in the face of sin and say, I love you. I love the sinner inside of there. I hate the sin that you're committing. I hate the separation. I hate that we're so in love with our own little worlds that we can't see the whole world around us. Well, I've got to keep this one thing. If I don't have this, I can't live. And I go, well, we weren't made to live forever. All of us are born to die. And when we rather die in Jesus, forgiven of our sins, and know that we have the promise of eternal life, are we so afraid of the truth that we don't even want to look at it? Well, I'm forgiven. I know Jesus. I keep on doing what I'm doing. I'm going to ignore what the rest of the world's doing because as long as you don't affect my little world. Works out just fine until the devil comes knocking on your doorstep and throws you out. It works just fine until your family is in chains. Through the bondage that you put them through of addiction and temptation and hate and drama and all the things fell in the blank. When we've got the world and the devil run over us. We're going to let people that are not even in our world to, to, to dictate to us what we can and can't do. See, I believe we have the freedom to choose how we worship, how we live, how we work. And my freedom stops when it infringes on somebody else's freedom. You can't impose your freedom upon mine. We're all free to choose. My greatest prayer is that you are free to choose Jesus, that you love others, no matter what, who they are and what they are and what they've done. Because I'm right in the middle of this. I'm a sinner saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. And I don't need to continue to sin. If we are freed by sin and we're dead in Christ, we are alive with him as well and we should live as Christ told us to live. Love one another as I have loved you. Well, Brother David, they got me afraid. They got me, they're preaching hate against me. And I'm scared. I'm like, okay. That's happened before. And it will happen again. What are you going to do about it? If you know where your home is, is and you know where you're going and if you know where the truth is you shall be free as it says in the gospel of John chapter 8 verse 36 if the son therefore shall make you free you shall be free indeed we are free through Jesus Christ the very son of God made us free by his death and his resurrection he made us free by giving us the words of life his words told us to love your brother, love your enemy, love your neighbor. Help those that are in distress. No longer cling to sin, but cling to his father. 
What choice are we making? What choice are you making today? What choice am I making today? What choices are we making as a community? What choices are we making as a state, as a nation? What choices are being made in the world? And right now the devil is abounding and we're being made slaves to sin. Slaves to fear. Slaves to hate. Slaves to division. And none of those things have any place in a believer in Jesus Christ's life. None of those things. Jesus tells us to love one another, help one another, lift each other up, and not to be afraid. Not to be troubled. We should live in Christ. Just we have, just we have died to Him, and we are dead to sin, but we are alive in Christ. We are alive because we know there's a home promised to us. We know that we are forgiven through Jesus Christ. But we don't need to continue. And we need to stop, step up and draw the line and say, you've got to stop taking away my freedom. I'm not going to impinge on your rights and don't need to impinge on mine. I love you as you are. Love me as I am. I love you as a believer in Jesus Christ, which means I love you no matter what. Is there any choice? What are we going to cling to? What are we going to live in? What are we going to stand up for? What are we going to say, this is the point? And it takes a real... Real person who is real in Christ. When I use the adjectives, will true believer, warrior, know a person who believes in Jesus Christ to stand up, who is real and say, I love you, when somebody's saying they hate you. Stand up and say, I pray Jesus upon you when somebody's trying to take your rights away. Somebody who stands up, this is wrong and this is right because this is not in Christ. See, the world is killing us. They're killing our children. They're killing our old people. They're killing us with hate. They're killing us with division. They're killing us with loneliness. They're killing us with addiction. All of those things have one simple solution. That is the name of Jesus Christ. Love each other. Lift each other up. Do not be afraid to reach out to each other in the hour of need. Do not be afraid to reach out to each other with a hand in sister and brotherly love do not be afraid to reach out to say I was once was dead but now I'm alive in Christ because I made the choice for him because he made the choice to, for me he set me free do you want to be set free today do you want to continue to live in this freedom that you are free from the burden of sin we have a choice of how we live our lives. In the book of Psalms, Psalms 97, verses 10 through 12, the psalmist writes this, You that love the Lord, hate evil. He preserves the souls of the saints. He delivers them out of the hands of the wicked. Light is sown for the righteousness and gladness for the upright in heart. Rejoice you in the Lord you righteousness and give thanks for the remembrance of his holiness. The Lord himself will deliver us out of the hands from the wicked. What well, God wants us to be delivered. <coughs> he may deliver us home. He may deliver us to justice. <coughs> he may deliver us to freedom, but he will deliver us. Let there be gladness in our heart because we are free. The Son made us free. The world can't take this away from us. The government can't take this away from us. Hate and division can't take this away from us. The only thing that takes that away from us is us, by us not choosing Jesus. We should rejoice and be glad because we are forgiven 
and we are free through Jesus Christ. Let us make the choice for him every day. Let us be free and let us live in Jesus every day. Let us live in freedom and praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Stay.
and go forth on this day free from fear, free from your sin, praising the name of Jesus Christ, no matter the cost. In his name, go forth. Amen.